impeachment for President Biden. That's what Kevin McCarthy is hinting at. He was on with Fox News talking about that very thing. Of course, he is the new Speaker of the House, leading the Republicans in the House of Representatives. And we've gone through a couple impeachments here relatively recently. You may remember the two from the last administration, both failed. But the way they work, the House has to do the impeaching, and then it goes over to the Senate. So we'll start with McCarthy before we check in with cocaine Mitch McConnell over in the Senate and Lindsey Graham and his comments about how he eats and what his diet looks like. Then we'll turn over to Adam Schiff where he responds to impeachment because it's setting off a firestorm. These documents could be a big, big problem for the Biden administration. Kevin McCarthy discussed it with Jesse Waters on Fox News. I will never use impeachment for political purposes, but I will definitely follow the truth and the facts of wherever it takes us. And I am tired of having America wide open because you know what else you get with a wide open border? More people dying from fentanyl. Just in my home state, just up from my house, we just had a cartel style killing. Impeachment Even a pivot baby to being shot fentanyl. in the face based upon what's happening on this border. 300 more Americans will die today because that border is not secure. American public has trusted us with the majority, and we will get to the bottom. All right, so impeachment might be a I real thing. I will never use impeachment for political purposes, but I will definitely follow the truth and the fact. All right, let's refresh that. <clears throat> Had a little bit of an error on that one. I closed the video, but Kevin McCarthy just wanted to keep talking. And we were done with Kevin McCarthy. For some reason, he just kept on yapping. But he's out there and he's saying impeachment is something that may actually be on the table. He's not going to use it politically, but if it warrants it, and a lot of people are saying it does warrant it, especially the cover-up. So let's turn our attention now over to the Senate. What does the Senate have to say about all of this? Because Cocaine Mitch is usually pretty quiet often. We often encourage him to maybe use a little bit more of that supplement so that he can talk and share with us more about the vision from the Senate, given the fact that he runs the place with the leadership of the Republican Party. Cocaine Mitch comes out and he's asked about the Biden documents. Let's see what he says. What is your level of concern about classified records showing up at Vice, uh, Joe Biden's home? And now we're learning about what happened to Mike Pence. And what specifically should Congress do to prevent this from happening again? Well, with regard to how the Justice Department handles it, I think they ought to treat everybody the same who has misplaced uh, classified documents. And uh, it seems so far as if the attorney general is making an effort to do that. And I, beyond treating everybody the same, I don't really have any additional advice. No advice, no real opinion, wants to treat everybody the same, has a difficult time recognizing that that has not been the current pattern. We are not seeing people being treated the same in this country. We've had a lot of issues about the Justice Department and the FBI treating people differently for a long time here on this channel, whether it goes to J6 or it goes to lockdowns or it goes to any of the COVID protocols or basically, you know, Antifa, riots in the streets, whatever. There's one standard of justice that goes for one side and another for the rest. McConnell has been in charge for a long time, leading the Republicans through ups and downs. And we're looking to him for a little bit of leadership to say something. The media tries again, a second crack at the apple. Do you think that this sort of hardline negotiation tactic that House Republicans are using with regards to the debt limit is necessary in order to get the debt under control? Do I think what? Do you think the sort of hardline negotiation tactic that some House Republicans are trying to use to force negotiation by holding the debt limit in question? Well, as I said earlier, I think <clears throat> if this isn't a good time to talk about the, the debt, I don't know when that is. And um, the debt ceiling does provide an opportunity to enter into a discussion about what Admiral Mullen said years ago when asked what was our biggest national security threat. He said it was the debt. Totally. And it's only gotten worse. Yeah, now, because of you people. During the pandemic. Didn't he sign on to that $1.7 trillion disgusting bill again? These people talk out of both sides of their mouths. It's disgusting. There was broad agreement on a bipartisan basis that we had to do what we did. As the pandemic ended and we began to go back to normal, 
Not a single Republican supported either of the two reconciliation proposals last year that added about $2.7 trillion to the spending spree. This is a good time to talk about it, to try to get an outcome. But the second part of what I said was I can't imagine any debt ceiling agreement that would get 60 votes in the Senate that would have any chance of passing the House. So the solution to this problem needs to be negotiated between the Speaker and the President. Yeah, he doesn't want any part in it because Mitch McConnell doesn't really want any part in anything consequential. Do you think President Biden's possession of classified documents at his home in Washington office could rise to the level of an impeachable offense? <laughs> Impeachment. I don't have an answer to that hypothetical. I do think. Yeah, we do know what you think about it, Mitch, because you wore the answer on your face right here when you did this. Right there. You see that? See those eye roll? It's basically an eye roll. I think he actually does eye roll. Let's see if he does it. Yeah. What do you think about impeachment? McCarthy mentioned it. What do you think about impeachment, cocaine, Mitch? Answer passing the House. So the solution to this problem needs to be negotiated between the Speaker and the President. Do you think President Biden's uh, possession of classified documents at his home in Washington office could rise to the level of a, an impeachable offense? <laughs> I don't have an answer to that hypothetical. I do think the Justice Department seems to be willing to treat everybody the same. That's and not try to happening. The documents. <laughs> and obviously, not it's all. not a great idea uh, to uh, take classified documents away from the archives. And uh, I would love to have some FBI agents rummage around Mitch McConnell's house. Let's see what he's got in his sock drawer. We'll see how they continue to handle it. Leader yeah. So some of the documents found at President Biden's home date back to his time in the Senate. You've obviously been around the Senate for a good amount of time. So has the process for handling classified documents as a senator changed over time? In your I, I, I never knew it was possible to take classified documents out of the skiff. So I don't, most of us don't think there's any way of getting it out of the skiff, much less bringing it to your office or taking it home. We'll see. We'll see. So, all right. Send the FBI over there. Send them over. Somebody call them. Call the FBI. Go over to Mitch's house. Go to Schumer's house. Go to Graham's house. Go to Nadler's house. How many documents does waddling Nadler have tucked away in his diaper bin? Do you, do you want Senator Sinema to run for re-election as an independent? Look, uh, Senator Sinema has been an important part of the United States Senate. The most important thing she did was to save the institution itself by protecting the filibuster. She's also been a significant part of the bipartisan agreements that have been reached in the Senate. As to whether or not she chooses to run again, it's really her decision. And I think it is a big dilemma for the Senate Democratic majority to decide whether to support her or to support somebody running on the Democratic ticket. And I'm pretty sure you were asking a bunch of questions along those lines right before we came out here. I look forward to reading what answers, if any, you got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He doesn't have any answers. He's going to be reading the news for uh, answers to questions. Thanks. Great job there, Mitch. All right. So that's Mitch McConnell. Now, there are also questions for Lindsey Graham, because Lindsey Graham, as we know, is one of the worst senators in America, has been for a long time. And I think he's really only interested in Lindsey Graham. But he was out and he was asked questions about Biden's documents. Mr. Graham, you're a very experienced politician. You know all about confidential classified material. What's your take on this Biden document dilemma? Uh, you got Trump, you got Pence, you got Biden. The only thing I think you'll find at my house is a bunch of Chick-fil-A bags on the floor. Yeah, uh, I believe that. The bottom line is I don't, I don't know how this happened. We need to get to the bottom of it. I don't believe for a minute that Mike Pence is trying to intentionally compromise, compromise national security. Think that about Biden and Trump, but clearly we've got a problem here. So hopefully when this is all said and done, maybe we're overclassifying things. That may be part of the problem. But count me in for getting this fixed. And the vice president, I know very well, I'm sure he'll stand up and be the first to say, if I had classified information in my house, uh, 
to explain why. I think he's one of the most decent people I've ever met. And so what became a political problem, um, you know, for Republicans is now a national security problem for the country. Thanks. Uh, if you say so, we'll see about it. It wasn't a national security problem for the last six, seven, ten years. So we'll see how much of a problem it is now. But did you hear his little Chick-fil-A bag comment? The only thing I think you'll find at my house is a bunch of Chick-fil-A bags on the floor. Which is gross. Uh, Why are our senators treating their homes in such disarray? It, I guess it makes a lot of sense now. Sort of how our Senate feels. Like there's a bunch of fast food wrappers all over the place even though Chick-fil-A is pretty damn delicious. But speaking of delicious food, <clears throat> let's talk about our friends at Four Patriots, where you can get your own survival food and your survival gear. And there's a lot of it over there at fourpatriots.com. Let's talk about it because my friends, a tree branch, you know, hit a power line back in Ohio, 2003. It shut down one power line, 21 power plants, hundred people died. We have a power grid. It was designed in the 1800s. Even the White House sees it. We've spent the last 25 years thinking about it. It's going to take 25 years to fix it. So they announced billions of dollars to do it. How long is that going to take? That's why being sovereign and being independent with your own power supply is more important now than ever. And if you go to fourpatriots.com, you can check out this Patriot power generator, the 1800. If you buy it, you'll get a solar generator that doesn't even need to install in your house. You just plug your medical devices in, your refrigerator. It's great. And right now you can go to fourpatriots.com. Use code Robert. Save 10% on anything in the store, including your first purchase. You'll see this Patriot Power Generator down there below. And if you purchase it, a portion of your sale is going to go to charities that support our veterans and their families. I'd invite you to go to fourpatriots.com. Use code Robert. Get a power generator. Get some survival food. Be prepared in case you need it from our friends at fourpatriots.com and use code Robert to save. All right, my friends. Now, let's wrap up with a quick conversation about our friend Pencil Neck Adam Schiff. As we talk about a possible impeachment of Joe Biden and the Biden administration, Schiff showed up on the Mika and Joe Brzezinski show and he explained his take on impeachment and the threats of being removed from the Intelligence Committee. Well, this is Kevin McCarthy uh, once again catering to the most right-wing elements of his conference uh, and doing the will of the former president uh, as well. Uh, he doesn't like the fact that I led the impeachment of Donald Trump for withholding hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid from Ukraine while that nation was at war in order to essentially extort them into helping his political campaign. Um, that's too bad. That's a nice reframing of that whole debacle. Uh, we're going to continue to hold uh, McCarthy accountable, Trump accountable, uh, and for him to to mess with the Intelligence Committee this way to try to dictate uh, the Democratic representation on the committee uh, and not just essentially tear down the functioning of that committee, but build up a new committee on this, the Select Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government. Uh, these should be seen as hand in hand. They are so upset that they're losing all of these weaponized select subcommittees. They got a lot of mileage out of them. And the Republicans are playing the same game. We read the letter from James Comer blasting out all over the place to many different entities. They miss that power. Tearing down mm. legitimate committees that are doing important national security work, building up these bogus committees that he's going to see, uh, you know, the, the right wing crazies. What? Uh, and it's just a further destruction of. No, who, like Liz Cheney? Of our norms and, uh, and I think, uh, deterioration of our democracy. All right, so well, everything is going to be a deterioration of our democracy if the Democrats are not in charge. Hakeem Jeffries did appoint him or nominate him again, which means this is very likely going to turn into sort of a battle between McCarthy and Hakeem Jeffries, evidently. This came out over to Kevin McCarthy, so the letter was drafted January 21st. Hakeem Jeffries wrote this. It says, Dear Speaker McCarthy, I write today to submit for renomination to qualified legislators Eric Stinky Swalwell and Pencil Neck Watermelon Head Adam Schiff. Together, these members have over two decades of distinguished leadership. Okay, but Eric Swalwell wouldn't even get an FBI clearance, according to Kevin McCarthy, so he's definitely gone. And Adam Schiff has been wrong basically about every single intelligence conversation that we've had thus far. He says appointments to the intelligence committee are within the prerogative of the speaker. 
in consultation with the Democratic leader, says it's my understanding that you intend to break with the long-standing tradition of deference to the Minority Party Intelligence Committee recommendations. Now, all this is fair game, okay? Because when the Minority Party made recommendations to Speaker Pelosi's committee, the J6 committee, she rejected theirs, right? She said, nope, you can't have those people. Jim Jordan was supposed to be on there. She said no. So they ended up with who she picked, which was Kinzinger and Cheney. Both of them made it on there. So this is good. They're all going to be crying foul about this, right? Oh, Adam Schiff got thrown off. Swabo got thrown off all this crap. Don't buy it for a minute. They started this game. The committees were supposed to be 13 members. Turned out there was like nine of them on there. <clears throat> Seven Democrats, two Republicans on the J6 committee, ultimately. So the same thing can happen here. The Republicans should go to war on this one. Keep them all off if they can help it. Democrats started it. It's only fair. If the Republicans don't do that, they're going to lose as they have been losing thus far. Now it's time to play since they have control. Schiff is now asked about this, said, look, all right, you've been renominated to be on the intelligence committee, but many people don't think that you're all that intelligent and that you don't belong on there. What do you say about that? If Kevin McCarthy boots Schiff off the panel, is Schiff going to lie down or is he going to come fighting back? Uh, I'm very uh, proud that uh, Leader Jeffries has nominated me to serve in that top role again. Uh, I have a great deal of experience uh, serving on that committee, probably more than anyone else in the House uh, at the present. Uh, and we're at a, a fragile time um, with a lot of security concerns around the globe, including that continuing war in Ukraine. Uh, why is he doing it? Um, because Marjorie Taylor Greene wants him to do it, uh, because Donald Trump oh. wants him to do it, and because McCarthy is a weak speaker. Uh, he dealt away the powers of his office, and now he's beholden to the most extreme elements of his conference. Um, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene was removed from her committee for encouraging violence against other members of the House. Uh, that is certainly not a precedent to be messing around with the Intelligence Committee the way McCarthy uh, uh, has been threatening. Yeah, uh, you know, if uh, McCarthy follows through on his threat, uh, and he, he may have the ability to do that, the, the intelligence committee he better. is a select committee. It wouldn't require a vote of the full house. Um, but I will consult with leader Jeffries and we will find another way for me to play an important role in holding the Republican extremes accountable uh, and making what sure are they going to do their democratic institutions. What are they going to do? I'm more determined than ever uh, to do uh, uh, my job in protecting our democracy, no matter what Kevin McCarthy or Marjorie Taylor Greene or Paul Gosar or Donald Trump or any of these people have to say about the matter. Okay, so he says, even if I'm not on the committee, don't worry about it. I'm still going to basically be in charge of uh, whatever I'm already doing. You know, it's just like a total extension of the intelligence committee, regardless of him being on or off the intelligence committee. Yikes. Pretty scary stuff.